Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got a huge storm coming with some intense 80 mile per hour winds, large hail, and tornadoes is a risk. Plus, we'll take a look at the tropics on what may be coming in the week ahead. Welcome back everyone. This is your morning update. I appreciate all my followers out there and all the new followers that joined the channel recently. So if you are new and you do like detailed weather breakdowns of North America and the tropics, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to the satellite picture this morning, kind of break everything down for you. So we do have this area of, of interest right here where the National Hurricane Center has an 80% chance. This is labeled of 91L. <laughs> And I think it's going to form into a storm, but not anytime soon. It's got 60 knots sheer out ahead of this system. So it's going to be having a tough road. But once it gets past this area, I do feel like it's going to be a named storm. And it would probably take the name Danielle, but that won't be until September. So we do have a stalled frontal boundary out here off the coast of the Carolinas as well. But we also have that another area instability that the National Hurricane Center has that 20% chance of developing. It's converging right now. We've talked about into Jamaica, into the Cayman Islands with a lot of heavier rains. This is going to be pushing across the Yucatan and the remnants is going to be heading into the Gulf of Mexico while the Gulf is open for business now. So that's going to be able to tap into some of that tropical moisture. They're going to be start feeding into Texas. Well, we got a lot of drier air just really coming in off the West Coast where the heat is really going to be cranking this week. But right now, my main concern is up here with this area of instability up here into portions of Iowa. That's going to sneak across moving into the upper Midwest today. And that is going to be bringing a severe round of thunderstorms right around rush hour. So that's not a good setup going into this afternoon. So in fact, the Storm Prediction Center has upgraded this risk. Well, we highlighted this risk a couple of days ago. And yes, in fact, we do have now an enhanced risk for severe weather right along the portions of Illinois and Indiana. And that slight risk is expanded too. So I am expecting all three modes of severe weather with the main impact from this system are going to be the intense winds. It's kind of rare to see with this hatched risk of these dotted shaded areas right here in northern portions of Illinois and Indiana, that could be packing some winds of 70, 75, even upwards to 80 miles an hour. And there are some isolated incidents where we could even have some reports of up to 90 miles an hour. It's gonna be a pretty intense squall line coming through. Unfortunately, it's gonna be coming through during rush hour. So if we zoom in to some of the uh, HRRR high resolution guidance right along five six o'clock in the afternoon time frame storms are going to be blowing up up here to portions of peoria and to davenport going over the chicago area all those little white dots there that's definitely an indication of some pretty large hail associated with this but some really intense winds all indications are in fact upwards of 70 75 80 miles an hour so if you live in this area, if you got a, a lot of truck drivers follow this channel, that's gonna be a, a pretty intense crosswind. So it's probably best to you know, keep an eye on the clock. If you're in this neck of the woods, five, six o'clock, it'd probably be best to just to pull over and protect yourself a, a, along a building for an hour or two and just kind of ride this thing out because uh, man, it's just gonna be really difficult to drive in that situation. Unfortunately, it does come uh, during rush hour traffic. so. Yeah, we could be looking at all three modes of severe weather. We do have that enhanced risk in place. It has expanded with the newest update. And then we have that intense squall line coming ac crumbing across. And then that tornado risk is is uh, a 2%. It's isolated, but definitely there is a risk for tornadoes uh, later on this afternoon into the early evening hour. But out west, it's all about the heat, man. It's really going to be cranking out here in California and portions of the deserts here where they do have excessive heat watches currently in place. And it's going to be an ongoing all-week ordeal out here with the heat really start to intensify and probably topping out sometime this weekend with plenty of triple-digit temperatures 
and there's the flood watch out here into portions of far west texas so they've been inundated with a lot of rain lately and there's actually going to be a lot more coming down there in uh, texas so let's take a look at the overall map i showed you the view about six o'clock this is about 10 o'clock so we're still going to have that squall line moving through from the northwest to the southeast and that's really going to be expanding and elongating so that time frame from say five o'clock to midnight is going to be bumpy uh, along this neck of the woods so if you live in northern portions of missouri get it into illinois into indiana up here in wisconsin uh back here into uh i'm sorry not wisconsin into michigan here and then fishtailing all the way down and through ohio yeah those storms could really be on pretty intense a squall line as it moves across and the gulf will be starting to open up for business as we do have that cold front along this boundary and that will be sinking southward and pulling in that gulf moisture and that is going to be setting the stage for more heavy rain moving back into oklahoma and back into texas but before that man we've got a lot of winds to contend with that, that nasty squall line and here's the latest indications where yeah those 70 75 80 even upwards to almost 90 miles an hour in some isolated instances up here into portions where they do have that hash risk in place say between five o'clock and midnight tonight so up here in northern illinois indiana back here in uh, michigan those areas are going to be under the gun for all three modes of severe weather but the main impact is going to be your intense winds and that will traverse southward eventually headed into kansas and by the time we get into tomorrow time frame those will be over portions of Oklahoma with some of those higher wind gusts, but not nearly as intense as what you're going to see today. But overall, for the next 48 hours, you can definitely see where all the rain and instability will be, right? So you got that cold front, you got this upper level trough that's moving through. The Gulf opens up for business. So you got widespread rains coming back for Oklahoma, a good chunk of Texas here, back into the southeast and up here into where this upper level low is. That's more the intense range you're going to be coming across Illinois, Indiana, and that will eventually swing in through Kentucky portions of Tennessee, but eventually head off into the Northeast as well. While out here, <laughs> there's nothing there, right? That is indicative of a lot of heat building back out West and a lot of sinking air and it's dry as a bone. So if we definitely look at some of these ridging patterns it's definitely concerning because we've got this heat really intensifying this is by two but by, by uh, later on this afternoon it's going to be intensified to a, a 594 dm that's an indication of a pretty large high pressure system with a lot of sinking air over it and that means widespread triple digit heat and this uh in this neck of the woods out out west and that i think it really intensified that cranks up almost to a 600 so for in layman's terms, that is some significantly a, a heat dome going to be building over out west. And we could be looking at numerous records breaking and then plenty of triple digit heat. So let's take a look at some of this heat going to be building. So this is later on this afternoon. We're talking 107, 113s popping up, 115 along into California, back widespread triple digits. 102, 106, even well into the 90s, even portions up here in uh, Washington and Oregon into some triple digit heat, even sneaking back up here to and in, do uh, Idaho. But as we get into Thursday time frame, I think it just cranks up even higher. So now we have more widespread 100 degree heat, if not 110 plus in places as that heat dome just really starts to expand and amplify over those areas so the heat is a huge concern out here off the west this week but i think it really starts to peak at its highest by the time we get into this weekend and especially on sunday that's when i think we're going to be seeing the most intense heat they've seen really all summer out here in the portions out especially california so i was looking at some of the all-time record highs in los angeles it's actually 110 degrees and that happened on September the 26th, 1963. So I don't think we get that high, but I think we could easily top out at 105 degrees by the time we get into, you know, Sunday time frame. And that's for Los Angeles, folks. So out, 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 you know, out in the outskirts there, you're talking 
110 plus easily and 115s even sporadic isolated 120s could be popping up here in two portions of california so definitely some dangerous heat going to be really building all throughout the week but really maxing out by the time we get into this weekend so let's take a look at for the rest of the country because we got all it's all about the heat and this is the radar time frame for wednesday as those systems move through you can see a lot of clear skies out here that's all because the heat going to be really just over that area it's tough to rain in that type of atmosphere so all the precipitation just gets pressed it gets pressed once that cold front moves through you got pretty much clearing on the back side and so all that will be sinking southward from Oklahoma back into Texas. This will be on Wednesday time frame as this cold front will seek, seek further off into the southeast, but then have it be more or less centered over the northeast by the time we get into Wednesday. And by Thursday, uh, you can actually see this better on the kind of the humidity value you know, map. All the areas in brown, that's your that's your dry air, right? That's your like sinking air. You, that's the high pressures in place. So there's a lot more dry air than unsettled air. So that with that ridge just really starting to build out west, you have a little bit of a cool down, you know, a day or two. Just you know, not even that cold. I'm just talking just five to de five degrees cool down in the northeast. That is replaced by that ridge. So once that cold front moves through, it warms back up on the backside and all the instability will be sunk into portions of Texas. So it all be basically gets compressed with the Gulf open up for business and the cold front sagging south. It actually doesn't even make it into Texas, but it has that squeeze play happening and then it rings out the tropical moisture and it'll just dump itself onto the state of Texas, <laughs> which is completely the opposite of what they've been seeing, you know, with all the rain coming back in that area. And I think it actually continues for them going forward for this week. So as we expand the view to Friday and swing out into the tropics area, I do feel this is the area that we'll have to be looking at for the next setup for our name storm, which could be Danielle. I don't think it happens by the time the end of August, but once it passes that 60 knot shear, then I do feel it's going to be having enough. I mean, the, the National Hurricane Center already has an 80% chance of developing. So once it passes that shear, then it's going to be smooth sailing. Once it get past, it's going to be probably north of the uh, Puerto Rico by the time we get into, say, Friday into this weekend. So we're probably dealing with a named storm of Dian Danielle by the time we get into this weekend. And that will be, you know, we'll be having to look out for that as it continues to move in moving closer to the United States, but closer to home. And the more main concern is these little disturbances, right? So this disturbance that the National Hurricane Center has that 20%, I do feel it's going to be bringing a lot of heavy rains to Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, back into the Yucatan. But it's the main impact from this system is going to be the heavier rains. I know the GFS was blowing up this system day after day after day, insisting it's going to hit the United States and had no other model support. Now it's actually kind of caving, which we all thought it would, <laughs> back into portions and kind of leaning towards what the Ewer has been suggesting all along. A lot of that moisture gets pulled into the Pacific side, and that actually is still going to have tropical moisture pulled into Texas, so you don't miss that on the rain, but you're, prob you're definitely not going to get a named system out of this uh, site for a tropical named storm. So... So yes, by the time we get into this weekend, we're probably going to have the remnants of that little circulation that's over the Caribbean right now. The main pool of moisture is going to be snuck in on, on the Pacific side, while we do have some tropical moisture feed feeding into Texas. And that's why they remain below average and have all that unsettled weather and the heaviest rains get locked over West Texas and South Texas going in by the time we get in the second half of this week so and you can definitely see this by sunday time frame as we go into this weekend with the ridge building out west it sneaks over the top and then it really starts to amplify over the northeast while you got the cooler conditions underneath so you have that compressing effect with the gulf open for business you have the cold front sagging south it won't go past into texas it'll never make it there but because of the cloud cover and all the 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 open business for the gulf of mexico and those little disturbances 
it's going to set up some heavier rains over portions of texas and by default that's going to bring them cooler conditions on average and that'll sneak into uh, uh you know arkansas louisiana back into mississippi and actually it will sneak into portions of florida as well but as far as the rain aspects go for the caribbean i am expecting above average flooding rains into portions of jamaica into the cayman islands sneaking into the yucatan from that disturbance with the stalled front the remnants of an old front and some of this tropical moisture coming in from this wave will get sucked into that and combine along with the cold front then it will have that convergence setting up over portions of west texas central texas over south texas but the main instability will be shifting further south and get pulled into the pacific and then eventually eventually about 10 days from now that'll actually help with the monsoon and actually probably bring some more rains back into southern california if you can believe that <laughs> so overall for the next 10 days here's the setup right it's high and dry out there in california so that's going to be a welcome relief if all this plays out like i think it will bring in some some uh, some rains but this won't be until 10 days from now but we got a lot of heat to contend with between now and then as the ridge will be pretty much locked over portions of the west and that'll sneak on over the top and then really start to intensify as we get deeper into this weekend with all the instability further south with all the uh, tropical type moisture and then the cold front and then the remnants there all combined into one with those below average temperatures and sets the stage for the highest precipitation anomalies along the deep south going into texas while you have much of the country drying out under that ridge of high pressure so you get past today through the ohio valley with that significant blast of severe storms and that'll shift off into portions of the northeast and eventually head south and bring all the instability as this front kind of stalls out by midweek so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update why i protect you before and after the storm